Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today, we're gonna to be going over how I passed the Salesforce admin exam. Um, but before we get into it, I do wanna mention a few things of housekeeping. One, there's gonna be timestamps down below. So if you want to kind of jump around between the different sections of the video, feel free to do so. If you wanna save it, come back to it do that. Number two, I'm gonna list all the resources that I mentioned down below and they'll be linked. And most of them should be free, but if there are any paid resources, I'll differentiate if they're free or paid. So then you can choose whichever one fits within your budget. Number three, this is a part of the series on my channel of how I passed all the Salesforce exams I have passed. You can check out that playlist down below as well. And any future exams that I pass, I will be filming a very similar video to this to explain how I passed that exam. And before we jump in, be sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. All right, let's go ahead and jump into what is the Salesforce admin exam. All right, so what actually is this exam? A lot of people on the ecosystem start out with the admin exam. Now, recently Salesforce has released the associate exam. So if you don't have the associate, I would recommend getting that first. Um, but the admin exam is the definitely the doorway to becoming a fully fledged Salesforce professional um, and working towards becoming a Salesforce professional full time. This is regardless of whatever path you choose to eventually end up on or eventually go for. This could be just a really, really awesome admin. You could be a developer, a consultant, you could be a business analyst, an architect, a certified technical architect, really whatever you want to do within the Salesforce ecosystem, it, it starts with the admin exam. Now the admin exam is so really important because all of the other features of Salesforce really build upon this first initial admin exam. All of the best admins, developers, architects, uh, business analysts were first admins and they really understood with a huge depth and breadth of uh, the different admin functionalities that you can use within Salesforce. Now that's just my opinion. You can become an awesome developer, consultant, architect, whatever, and learn all those functionalities of Salesforce. But in my opinion, in my work experience, the best developers, architects were first admins. Also, this exam is a prerequisite to a lot of other exams for becoming a developer or an architect or a consultant. So it is a really important exam for you to go ahead and master. Now, personally, I'll add some of my opinions in later as well, but I do think that this exam is kind of difficult in comparison to a lot of the other exams because this is getting your feet really dirty into a lot of different aspects of Salesforce. The admin exam jumps around a lot between different aspects of reporting, data model, security model, and how all those mesh together. So in my opinion, it is a fairly difficult exam, so don't be afraid to fail it on the first try or two or three or four. This exam as a whole, it's gonna be about an hour and 45 minutes to take. It's gonna be either 60 or 65 questions for you to go through and answer in that amount of time. It'll be 60 or 65, 60 of the questions will be scored. And then you may have an optional five non-scored questions that are baked in within the exam for questions that they like to test out with their people who are taking the exam. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be like at the end when you've already finished the exam. The structure of the questions is going to be um, a multiple choice type of questionnaire where it's gonna be a choose one out of four or a two out of five or a three out of five. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the exam guide and I'll let you know what the different sections are. So I'm gonna list the exam guide down below in the links so you can check these out, but this is just the like seven or eight different sections that they have. It's gonna be configuration and setup at 20%, object manager and lightning app builder at 20%, sales and marketing applications at 12%, service and support applications at 11%, productivity and collaboration at 7%, data anal and analytics management at 14%, and then workflow and process automation at 16%. So there's a bunch of different aspects of Salesforce and it's not like when you're doing like a specifically all the sales tools focused one where it's just gonna be the sales tools focused exam questions. The admin exam bounces around between like sales and marketing and then service and then automation and then data model, security model. That's why I personally think it's a more difficult exam. All right, let's go ahead and transition into my background when I took this exam. I think that's super useful to have when someone is giving you advice about how they took the exam, how they passed. Um, I kind of want to know what it was like for them so then I can gauge my personal experience to their personal experience. At the time of taking the admin exam, let me preface this, I failed it two times before finally passing on the third time. So it really is okay to fail a few times and it will help you be a better admin in the future. At the time of taking this, I just graduated with my bachelor's 
in business management and I was looking for a career and I had gone to a family function with my husband with his family and one of his cousins actually was working on Salesforce and had kind of talked to both my husband Jeremy and I about Salesforce and what that kind of career entailed um, and that was really awesome if you know my husband Jeremy he appears somewhat frequently on this channel he's also in Salesforce he is I think a 14 time certified Salesforce architect so he does know a lot about Salesforce as well. Moving on, I had some experience with Salesforce, some hands-on experience as an end user, um, but not really knowing that I was using Salesforce at all, just knowing that that's kind of where I put in the customer information that I was dealing with at my um, part-time job. I had been learning SQL, which is a database language that is very similar to SoCool, which is what Salesforce uses. It's like SQL pretty much just within Salesforce. I had some other database experience working with um, volunteer organizations. I was super into family history and I still am and that kind of helped me understand the basics of relational databases, how they work, and that helped me transition into Salesforce and it made the transition easier. But that was kind of my background um, working with Salesforce. I wasn't a Salesforce professional, just had worked with it a little bit in a job and then also worked with other databases for a few years. All right, so let's move into what I used to study for the exam. I was studying for about two and a half to three months when I had eventually passed the exam and that is of full-time study. So first I started out on trailhead kind of learning about Salesforce and trying to get my feet wet into what Salesforce actually was and if this is what I wanted to do for a career. I really binged a lot of trailhead content and I think I got over a hundred badges before I became a Salesforce admin and before I got my first Salesforce certification. And I really, really bounced around a lot between different aspects of Salesforce trying to figure out what I wanted for a career. One thing I wish I would have done was had more of a clear idea of, hey, I would really like to become a certified admin, so let me take the admin trails to and the tra admin trail mix that Salesforce has that I'll link down below as well. So then I could really have a straightforward structured learning path that was going to help me get certified. Now, I don't regret learning all those other things at all, but I wish I would have been more structured in preparing for that admin exam. I also watched a lot of YouTube videos on Salesforce and admin training and trying to get my feet wet about what the different aspects of Salesforce were, how it was structured. I also watched, um, I believe, two different courses that kind of did help me learn a lot more about Salesforce, but this was in the transition between um, classic to lightning. So half the courses were in classic and half the courses were in lightning and it was really confusing. And I just didn't drive well with the instructors. And that's totally fine. That was totally on me. Um, just personalities didn't mesh well. So at that point I felt like pretty confident, like, hey, I've learned a lot about Salesforce. I think that I'm like ready to take this and I'm ready to pass. So I took it at about six weeks of studying full time, kind of bouncing around, taking courses, not really having a lot of structure to my learning paths, um, which was completely different than what my husband did. He was very structured in how he was learning and I failed it. <laughs> and um, I think I got about 50% on that exam. And I think the pass is around 63-ish to 65-ish percent pass. So. After that, I felt like, okay, you know, I've only got to pass a couple more questions or I've only got to answer a couple more questions correctly in order to pass. And so I think I took like another week or two and looked up more YouTube videos, looked back at the courses, did a few more trailhead badges, and then I tried again and I failed. <laughs> and so that was about two months of studying. Well, actually I was pretty discouraged and so I took a some time off, maybe like a week or two, to kind of decompress and figure out, okay, is Salesforce actually what I wanna do? And it is okay to feel discouraged, but if you really wanna do Salesforce, and if you really want to become a Salesforce professional, just really learn different study strategies and use a bunch of different resources to help you understand Salesforce better. Um, and get your hands dirty, your feet wet, whatever you wanna say, doing things that'll help you remember these concepts on the admin exam. So I changed up my strategy and what I really did was I took those scores from the admin exam previous attempts and I mainly focused on the sections that I did the worst in or that I was failing in. So that way I could turn those weaknesses into strengths and that's where I could make up the most ground in order to be able to eventually pass. Now that's the same strategy I used throughout all of my other certifications that I've taken. If I'm taking it and I failed it as the actual exam or if it's the practice exam that I failed or even if I pass the practice exam, I still take the lowest few scoring sections 
And I studied those really intensely in the concepts that are in there. And I use that to turn those weaknesses into strengths, make up the most ground in the least amount of time. So the main focus is that I had gone in were the sales and marketing applications, which that was a lower scoring one, as well as reporting. I used Trailhead, I used the, um, the Salesforce help articles, and I looked up the individual topics um, on YouTube videos and on blog posts to help me understand from multiple angles to help me really understand those topics and those specific functionalities of Salesforce and what the different rules and limitations were of those things. And what I really think helped me go from not passing to passing within that strategy was the Focus on Force practice exams. One thing that Focus on Force does really well and what I think that most <laughs> practice exams should have is a reason why as well as a link to documentation why you got an answer correct or incorrect so you can learn the underlining um, reasons and documentation functionality, whatever you want to call it, behind why you got that question correct or incorrect. That is super important to understand rather than just trying to memorize a question and an answer, which definitely was um, a mistake that I had made previously, is memorizing questions and answers when I should be memorizing and understanding the concepts behind those questions and answers. So then finally, after taking all of the Focus on Forest Practice exams, understanding why I was getting those correct or incorrect, I took it again at around the two and a half, three month mark and I was able to pass that exam and I was super excited. <laughs> Um, and then I was able to open up my LinkedIn and eventually land a Salesforce, a full-time Salesforce job. All right, so this was a few years ago. One, I will say Salesforce takes a long time for them to change the exams. So there may be things that um, are on the exams that aren't necessarily still a bigger part of Salesforce. So you might see workflow rules or process builders on an exam when workflow rules and process builders have been phased out. Uh, but since I've taken this exam, there have been a lot more resources that have just been made available and people have created and they are really, really awesome. So personally, I have created an admin exam um, course to help you better understand and pass the exam. I will link that one down below. It's a full length course as well as a glossary and some notes and hopefully soon a uh, practice exam as well. Um, I also recommend using the trail mix and having a structured study path to passing the admin exam and using those resources. So I'll try and link the trail mix down below as well. And then again, I wanna mention some free resources that you can use and utilize. There's a bunch on here on YouTube, blogs, Twitter even, where people are trying to put out resources on these separate concepts. So if you're having struggles with particular concepts like master detail or lookup relationships or report types versus report formats, by the way, all of those are gonna be on the exam, so you might wanna look those up. Um, there's a bunch of different free resources, YouTube videos, blog posts to help explain the different intricacies of each of these. And oftentimes the people that are explaining these are gonna be a lot easier to understand than the Salesforce help articles that you're probably gonna find at the top of the Google search. So I also recommend taking practice exams. Um, I'll try and link a few more practice exams down below, but Focus on Force is really awesome in how they have structured theirs. And then I do wanna talk a little bit about my thoughts on the exam. Um, the Salesforce admin exam is pretty difficult because you're just, like even if you took the associate exam, it is still a lot more information that you need to understand and cover. And it's gonna bounce around a lot and a lot more than other exams do. The associate exam only has four sections. This section has like seven or eight different sections that really bounce around a lot. But I mean, it is still a good exam to take and to use to help you land a job. Now, when I had taken the admin exam, you could fairly easily get a job with just the admin exam. And unfortunately, just because of how the job market is as of, when am I filming this? <laughs> Uh, June of 2023, the job market is slow uh, because of recent layoffs. And so it may take a few more certifications, a few more months of trying to get a job and networking for you to land a job. I hope that changes in the future as the job market starts to pick up, um, especially here in the United States, that's what I have the most experience with as these new admins eventually move up into other roles such as senior admins, business analysts, developers, architects, that'll open up more entry-level admin jobs. But don't get discouraged with it, with it being hard to land a job within Salesforce in this current climate. It is just really, really difficult. What I recommend is networking on LinkedIn, showing your knowledge through certifications, showing your knowledge through creating content, helping other people out, and eventually you will land a job. So those are kind of my thoughts on the exam and kind of the current state of the Salesforce certification plus job market. 
If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. Like, subscribe. You can check out the Salesforce courses down below. Connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.